Welcome to episode 4 where we will discuss some brief information about statistical analysis. In this episode, we will discuss some basic statistical terms and methods on how to choose the correct statistical test in order to make a meaningful productive research out of raw data. First, we need to define the independent and dependent variables and how they are related. For example, in a study of how different doses of a drug affect the severity of symptoms, a researcher could compare the frequency and the intensity of symptoms when different doses are administered. Here, the independent variable is the dose and the dependent variable is the frequency or intensity of symptoms. The co-findings, however, are whether there is any comorbid diseases or allergic reactions that interfered with this drug and during this process. Now, let's define the four fundamental levels of measurement scales that are used to capture data in the form of surveys and questionnaires. First measurement we have is the nominal scale. A nominal scale describes a variable with categories that do not have a natural order or ranking, such as gender and color. Ordinal scales, however, are categories that are in order, such as social class, for example, first class, second class, third class, and the other example is the disease severity, uh, like mild, moderate, and severe. Moreover, nominals shows only differences, while ordinals shows differences and the direction of these differences. Moving on to interval scales. Interval scales are meaningful organizations with equal differences, and the best example for it is uh, temperature scales, like the degree Fahrenheit and Celsius scales. Lastly, the ratio scales. These are variables that has all the properties of the interval variable and also has a clear definition of a true zero. And the best example is the Kelvin temperature scale, where there is no number below zero. Also other examples like the enzyme activity, dose amount, reaction rate, flow rate, concentration, pulse, weight, length, etc. Moving on to converting data. Broadly speaking, data transformation refers to the conversion of the value of the given data point uh, using numerics and characters. And as we can see, quantitative data is identified as numerics and qualitative data is ident identified as characters. So we have this example in front of us about the blood pressure, where the blood pressure is described in figures, in numbers, and then transformed by uh, using the cutoff points to a qualitative data and to an informative, much more informative form of data. Now we need to define and differentiate between categorical data and continuous data. Categorical data are any variables where the data is represented in groups. For example, uh, we have the ranked variables like while measuring and intensity ordered data such as the uh, stages of cancer. And in continuous data, these data can be at any value within a range. For example, we have the person's height that could be in any value in the normal range of human heights. So uh, moreover, uh, categorical variables contain a finite number of categories or distinct groups, and they might not have a logical order. However, continuous variables have an infinite number of the values between any two values and continuous variables can be described as numerics or date or time. Moving on to descriptive analysis and statistical analysis. The, uh, descriptive analysis is the first important step for conducting statistical analysis where it gives you an idea of the distribution of your data and helps you detect outliers, typos, and it also enables you to identify associations among variables. Thus, it makes you ready to conduct further statistical analysis. As we can see in this, these two tables, the descriptive analysis is often presented as uh, frequencies and percentages, while statistical analysis uh, are tests done to discover the mean, standard deviation, interquartile range, correlation coefficient. Now we need to know how to choose statistical tests as there are many different tests that you can use in statistics. Sometimes it can be quite difficult to know which test to use. 
So there are three main questions that you would ask yourself while trying to work out which is the most appropriate test for you. Uh, the first question is, what is the level of measurement uh, you would use for th your data uh, that you're analyzing? And the second question is, how many samples do you have? The third question is, what is the purpose of analyzing this data? Now to the main research question. How many samples are there that are appropriate for our research or our study? Is it one sample? If it's one sample, then you would be using the one sample proportion or the one sample t-test. In special measures of one sample, where the sample is measured twice, we'd prefer using a time series related test such as the k-squared or paired t-tests uh, in order to run correlated units or and uh, dependent variables. If you have two samples, then you'd be running two sample proportion tests or two sample t-tests. In special measures in two samples, where there are special measures at two points in time, you'd also be using a, a time series related test such as the k-squared or paired t-tests. However, in three samples or more, we can also conduct a more formal type of test for, to test the homogeneity of variance. And the best procedure is by using the ANOVA sample test. So these are the common statistical tests that are used in our medical field, as you can see. And to determine which statistical test to use, you need to know whether your data meets certain assumptions to these tests and the types of variables that you're dealing with. And also the number of samples. Is it a one sample or a two sample? Or is it three or more samples? Now, coming to the unpaired and paired data. Unpaired data means that both samples consist of distinct test subjects. The subjects are not related. For example, one clinical trial might involve measuring the blood pressure from one group of patients who were given a medicine and the blood pressure from another group who did not receive the same medicine. This would be a perfect example for unpaired data. Otherwise, paired samples, also known as dependent samples, are samples in which natural or matched couplings occur. An example of paired data would be a before and after drug test, where the researcher might record the blood pressure of each subject in the study before and after the drug administration. These measures would be paired data since each before measure is re only related to the after measure from the same subject. So when can we use t-tests? T-test is used in testing the hypothesis if there is significant difference between the mean of two groups which may be related in certain features and t-test can be performed depending on the data and the type of analysis that is required. For example, in one sample data or in two sample data. And we need to know how, how many standard errors away from the mean that is done in the t-test and what is observed differences. As an example of the relative standard error, we can consider two surveys of household income that both result in sample mean of $50,000, let's say for $50,000. If one survey has a standard error of $10,000 and the other has a standard error of $5,000, then the relative standard errors are about 20% percent and 10 percent respectively. The common assumptions when doing a t-test includes those regarding the scales of measurements, random sampling, normality of data, distribution, and adequacy of the sample size, and equality of variance in the, in the standard deviation or the homogeneity of variance. Most importantly for us is to know how to detect the normality of data distribution and the homogeneity of variance and how to check for them, how to check for the normality of uh, our data uh, by using histograms uh, for the dependent variables or by using chaperone work test. And for checking for the homogeneity of variance, we would use a Levine test as it's going to be explained to you in your SBSS lectures. So
So this is an example. An investigator wants to see if there is any statistical differences or correlations between the height of a males and females in his study. So what are the two variables of interest? As we can see here, the height is the first variable and male and females gender is the second variable of interest. So what is the type of data for those uh, variables? As we can see, the height is a continuous type of data and the gender is a categorical type of data. Uh, the last thing is what is the appropriate statistical test to be used in this example? Um, the appropriate test as we can see that it's a one sample t-test would be the perfect test for this example. So these are the conditions where you can use t-tests when you take a random sample, a random representative sample, and when you compare two groups of scores, when you have a valid unbiased measures, and when you have a normal distributed data. So when to use chi-square, you need to make sure that you have two categorical variables. And you need to ask yourself, is, is one categorical variable independent from the other category? and you need to make sure are there different samples from the same population or not. Regarding the assumptions of chi-square, the value of cells expected should be five or more in at least 80% of the cells and no cell should have an expected of less than one. And the data in the cell should be in frequencies or counts of cases rather than percentages or some other transformation of data. So how to check for chi-square test? You need to use the SPSS to tell you uh, this under the test. So this is an example. An investigator wants to see if there's any statistical differences or correlations between the BMI categories and the gender in studies. What are the two variables of interest? They are the BMI and the gender, of course. And what is the type of data of those two variables? The BMI is continuous and the gender is categorical. What is the appropriate statistical test to be used on this example? Of course, it's going to be the k-squared test. Moving on to ANOVA. ANOVA is used to analyze differences among means. Basically, you're trying uh, to test groups to see if there's a difference between them. So, for example, we have a group of psychiatric patients that are trying three different therapies, counseling, medications and by feedbacks and you want to see if one of these therapies is better than the other. So you need to define the statistical differences between the means of these uh, three independent groups and you need to reduce type 1 error from making multiple hypothesis testing in order to get uh, scientifically or statistically significant. So this is an example. An investigator wants to see if there's any statistical differences or correlations in three different study techniques and the GPA in his study. What are the two variables of interest? Of course, there are the study techniques and the GPA. What, are the, what is the data type of those two variables? Uh, the GPA is continuous and the study technique is are, are categorical. What is the appropriate statistical test to be used in this example? Of course, it's the NOVA test. Moving on to correlation and regression, uh, we need to know that correlation shows the relationship between the two variables, while regression allows us to see how one affects the other. So first of all, if we want to use the correlation and regression tests, we need to uh, verify the hypothesis or theory. And impor most importantly, the pr predictions. Predictions are cru crucial if you, we want to use the value of one variable we need to predict the, the value of the another. Uh, also, the reliability of measures are important and the validity. Are these two tests measuring at the same thing or not? So this is an example. An investigator was, wants to see if there is any uh, statistical differences or correlations between the gender and the GPA in his studies. What are the two variables of his interest? Of course, the, it's the gender and the GPA. What is the type of data of uh, the, those two variables? The GPA is continuous and the gender is categorical. What is the appropriate statistical test to be used in this example? Of course, it's going to be a correlation analysis. 
that's all for this lecture thanks for listening